Kelvin Sampson is the second year head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, a two time national coach of the year. As we now take a look at the Liberty Mutual starting lineups in the back grid for Indiana is the uh, terrific player Eric Gordon and Jordan Crawford has been just as good two freshmen back there in the middle the guy who leads him up front DJ White second in scoring in the Big Ten and now for the Ohio State Buckeyes the four-year starter Jamar Butler along with the sophomore David Whitey Clark has talked about Kufus Hunter is a senior and Turner is the freshman Thad Mata is in his fourth year as a head coach of the Buckeyes of Ohio State well, among Ted Hillary, Jim Burr, and Tom O'Neill, 22 Final Fours officiated. Today's game is being brought to you in high definition by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. It is rocking here in Ohio State. Outside, it's about five below with the wind chill, but it couldn't be more hot and more intense inside this building. This is a big game for both these teams. Significantly so for Ohio State, who's played a tough non-conference schedule, Kevin. They've yet to get a significant win against a high-profile team. And being here at home, they feel like they've got to try to take care of business in that regard against Indiana today. Ohio State beat Michigan here by 10 points on Tuesday. Kufus inside. He had a little bit of defense in front of him with White, but he puts it in and gives the Bucks a quick 2-0 lead. Well, Kufus is a guy who is much more comfortable facing the goal, but has shown the ability to get things done in the paint when he gets good touches. Here is Gordon. And Stemler cross court with a three. The defense by Lighty. And an offensive rebound by DJ White, the number one rebounder in the Big Ten. Kufus with the defense. Rebound by Hunter inside. Buckeyes looking to try to push it ahead. Nice job transitioning back defensively by Indiana there. Indiana beat Illinois on Thursday in double overtime in Champaign in a controversial game outside Stemmer over Kufus for three. And Tabor keeps it alive. Another offensive rebound. Three pass Kufus oh. inside to DJ White. That's one of the concerns when you scramble around and play at a, a, an attacking, trapping zone defense. When shots go up, you don't have individual blockout responsibilities, and you see Indiana already coming up with a bushel basket full of offensive rebounds. Good point. In the middle is Turner. Butler is the senior, plays virtually every minute of every game for the Buckeyes. Whitey with the screen. Turner is free. And the rebound by White. Indiana, the number one offense in the Big Ten coming into today. Well, they've got the inside presence in DJ White, Kevin, and they also have the ability to knock down threes. And Eric Gordon, they've got a guy who can create shots at any time, but particularly as you fight the shot clock. And great calm and patience for the freshman as well. And he's got it right here, launching a three. Kufus in his face, and a three. He's very smooth. One of the things you like about him is his explosiveness off the dribble. But you just mentioned it, Kevin, his pores. He always seems to be even killed, and I was really impressed from what I saw with how he handled himself in that hostile environment at Illinois earlier in the week. Kufus against White. And another rebound by D.J. White, who is out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The Alabama High School Player of the Year, like we said, he's the centerpiece of this team. Without question, has really embraced being a dominant inside post presence. Gobbling up rebounds to the tune of 12 a game in conference play. White is open. Hunter let him free to fire. Now the Buckeye keys today, what's on your mind with Ohio State? Well, I think they've got to keep IU off the free throw line. That's one of the things in terms of Eric Gordon's ability to get to the rim. And then they've got to guard the arc. They've got to defend the three-point line, but that's a tough quandary because of what D.J. White can do inside. The Buckeyes and Indiana are more zone defensive teams. And they try, to, they, try, they try to be aggressive in it, Kevin, but that does open up offensive rebounding lanes. Right through the hands of Kufus and picked up by Stemmer, a junior college transfer a season ago. And gets the start here. A long range three by Gordon and Turner gave him the room to fire. He's at two threes to begin the game for the Hoosiers. And that was deep, real deep. It's hard to guard a guy when he's six feet behind the three-point line.
Well, getting physical, here is what Indiana has had to face in UConn, Wisconsin, and Illinois. Well, those teams really played at a high level against Indiana. Illinois was a double overtime game that the Hoosiers were able to win. But one of the struggles for Indiana as they try to develop going forward is they haven't gotten consistent play from that power forward spot. Calvin Sampson has plenty of wing players that he's comfortable with, and obviously DJ is the anchor inside. But you can see in the different people that he started at the four spot, Mike White, Tabor here today, um, DeAndre Thomas, that he just has been unsettled in that particular position, and bigger teams have been able to hurt the Hoosiers there. Mighty with the three, Tabor with the defense, the rebound is pulled down by Crawford. Now Indiana's got this marvelous offense. Offense has been the issue for the Buckeyes. against Whitey with a little shove and the former Cleveland High School Player of the Year picks up his first personal foul. We've talked about the Bucks. Let's talk about the keys today for the Hoosiers. Well, we'll take a look at what Calvin Sampson team, Kent Sam Sampson's team needs to do. Points in the paint, transition defense. I think the Buckeyes will look to push that ball ahead when they defensive rebound, so Indiana has to get back defensively. But I guess points in the paint won't be a factor <laughs> if EG continues to stroke them from downtown. Wow. Now he's playing with that sprained left wrist that he had in practice a couple of uh, weeks ago. Here is Turner over Gordon, and the rebound by Gordon. He is from Indianapolis, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. That was kicked. So the Hoosiers will get it. By the way, they come in with an 8-1 Big Ten record. That's the best for an IU team since the 0-1-0-2 season. And this team, Indiana, is 5-1 on the road so far this season for a team that has had some success going away from home and winning. Whitey knocked it away, and 15-54 to play in our first half from Columbus, Ohio. Spent right here at The Ohio State University for 29 of his 42 years as a college head coach, Knight led the Indiana Hoosiers. We've got to have good movement. You've got to screen well. You've got to recognize where to take the basketball. You've got to be alert to what we're doing. I was told this was the only known videotape of a pregame speech from Bob Knight. And you know, it's interesting when you think about Coach Knight. Obviously, the numbers speak for themselves. The basketball acumen, the convictions, the passion with which he coached make him a legendary figure no matter what sport you're talking about when you talk coaches. Well, how do you think Indiana should honor Bob Knight? What should they do? Have the court's been named. I mean, what can they do to take those 29 years in the contest? Well, I tell you what, there has to be some way to honor what he meant to that university, to the Big Ten, to college basketball, to basketball in general. I don't have a specific idea about a, a, a monument of some type somewhere in a prominent place would perhaps be fitting. But again, that's a decision that the university, the board of trustees, president, those folks are going to have to determine how and when they try to do that. But I think it's deserved. Well said. Shot clock was winding down. Indiana's on top. They have taken two Ohio State turnovers and converted those into five points. Thus, you have our 8-2 game right now with the Hoosiers on top. And the Buckeyes have struggled to take care of the ball and to knock down a couple of good shots they've had other than the one inside shot by Kufus. Everything else has been on the perimeter for Ohio State. John Diebler, the sensational freshman from Upper Sandusky, Ohio, is in for Ohio State. Kufus over White. Rebound by Whitey. Knocked away by White. Picked up by Hunter. And reeled in by Crawford. Jordan Crawford works into Diebler. Pretty and good move. That tough shot. Kufus got the ball. The Buckeyes having so much trouble against this Indiana Hoosiers zone. It's really active. Covering the ball well, that's another reason that Ohio State has to defensive rebound and try to get out in transition before this zone defense gets set or knock down some perimeter shots. One of seven shooting for the Buckeyes. Offensive rebound by Kufus. Diebler for a three. He was the number one high school scorer in the country last season and set a state of Ohio record for all-time scoring in high school basketball. And is a terrific kid who has struggled enormously with his shot all season, but had a strong game the other night on Tuesday against Michigan, came off the bench with 14 points. 14 points and five rebounds. Exactly, there you look at the numbers there, LeBron James coming in fourth, <laughs> Geno Ford, Jay Burson, a fellow Buckeye, and then John Diebler.
Those are large, large high school numbers. I think I got to about 1,500. I was in looking my high school numbers. Career. I saw that Jerry Lucas is just right back too, along with you. It's uh, <laughs> what an accomplishment. Well, I'm, way, I'm way back there <laughs> at the 15, 1600 level. Mark, it's called helping your partner. That's what it's called. <laughs> Armand Bassett is in the game. He is a sophomore from Terre Haute, Indiana. He is now made, he starts a lot of games. 24 last year as a freshman, and a lot this year as well. They had Jamarcus Ellis in here as a three by Gordon. He took it right over to Williger, and the rebound is pulled down by Turner. And here comes Butler. Indiana has had five consecutive misses. Turner with a she move inside, and out to Kufus, wide open at the line. He's got four. Pressure by the Bucks. There is Bassett. And this kid right here with the ball was the number one junior college player last year, the National Junior College Player of the Year, Jamarcus Ellis. White, Ellis flashing inside and goes front by Turner. Well done. Good adjustment by Indiana. Out of the double team, White needs teammates to be cutting to the basket, and he did a nice job finding Ellis that time. Like you said, if Indiana could find any kind of consistency, which has kind of been their label this season, it'd be a terrific team. That's right. Jamar from way outside doesn't draw iron at all. Near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevy player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution. No more than seven minutes gone here in our first half, an important Big Ten game in Columbus, Ohio. That's it, White and Gordon. Right by Butler, who held. E.J. White. He's a senior, 14 double doubles double alive, another 18. Up. He's doing a terrific job. There he is with the throwdown and then the denial inside. He is playing at such a high level. As a matter of fact, there are very few big guys in the country playing with the consist consistency and the level of performance that DJ White has put forth so far this season. He had those foot injuries as a sophomore, and there was a little bit of hesitation about where his career might be headed. Well, he's embraced the work to get back into tremendous shape and has really become comfortable looking to be a dominant force inside. Mike Knight has just come off the bench. He hits the cutting Jamarcus Ellis and a two right there for the Hoosiers who build up a 12 to 7 lead over the Buckeyes. And it's important for Indiana, as we talked about, one of the keys points in the paint because every now and then, Kevin, we have the tendency to get two, to fall two in love with the three punches. Hoofers against the glass. Now he is three of five. Indiana has started 5 of 14, Bucks 4 of 11, the hustle by Terwilliger. And out of bounds. Now Jamarcus Ellis, one of the top rebounders and assist man in the Big Ten, but here, the junior college transfer taking it inside. And he helps the Hoosiers to a lead right now of three. Nashville led by 7-7, seven, seven, Kenny George. They should attack the Big South. VCU with Coach Anthony Graham, winning 10 of 11, leading the Colonial. And Kent State at 19 and 5, the class of the MAC. Strong teams, one and all. And now we take a look at a really short list of undefeated teams in conference play. Drake has won 21 consecutive games. Davidson, after a really challenging non-conference schedule, on a roll in their league. Memphis continues to be the only undefeated team overall in college. Teams Cornell doing a nice job in the Ivy. And how about Duke? Everybody wonders about how can they fare against elite teams because they don't lack a crew power guy. Flipping that over, their ability to mismatch you at every single time well down the said, floor well is something that might allow them to overcome in a one-game situation any disadvantage they might have due to a lack of a true post presence. What a win they had earlier this week over Carolina. Well, oh, I tell you, they attack, they attack you offensively and defensively. Everybody can make plays and make shots. They are really fun to watch. Shot clock here at five. Bassett against the senior Butler. Rebounded by Terwilliger. Indiana, by the way, five assists and no turnovers. Nice job defensively by the Buckeyes that time, forcing a tough challenge shot. Turner outside with a three. Was it a three or a two? It is a three. 
And Turner, who has really been struggling the last three games, comes up with a big hit. Maybe that'll get him back on track. It always helps when you knock down a shot, Kevin. Good screen by White. We have Mike White and DJ White on the floor. Both Whites are setting screens. Pick and roll there with Gordon. Out of bounds. That's the first turnover by Indiana today. Well, that's an impressive number because they come in committing three more turnovers a game than they force in conference play. So the fact that they've handled the ball well bodes well on the road. Gordon now versus Eric Gordon in November and December. What, what changes do you see in his game? I don't see a lot. I mean, he's a guy who can shoot it from deep. He's excellent at going to the rim. He may be a little more selective in going to the rim, in part because of that risk. Sure. Because when you go in there, you have to expect to get hit. And he's been maybe just a little more reluctant to probe into the lane. I mean, he was aggressively attacking the rim in the earlier games. White picks up his fourth rebound at the other end, has it right here. Him and Stemmer playing catch, to over defending, Cooper's in there, and a shove by the Buckeyes and a foul. Some people thought it might have been a travel, but it was a foul, and it goes on Cooper's for the first time. Well, nice job here by Indiana to try to get it into DJ a first and now a second time. There's Kufus and the reach in by Terwilliger. With the foul, I think, is missing on close to Kufus. It was, yeah, first on him. He was bumping him ever so mildly there. And Hunter has taken the place of Kufus. That's a second consecutive Indiana turnover. Well, the Buckeyes are doing a nice job of challenging passes, Kevin. It's a little thing, but it's a big thing not just allowing teams to throw the ball in bounds, especially along the sideline. Eric Turner's three is tied this game. Now is the best time to come to Disneyland Paris as kids under 12 stay and travel free from January the 6th to March the 19th. So don't wait to celebrate our 15th anniversary. And if you book before January the 31st, you can save an extra 15%. Call now on 08448 003 Dudley Hart, and well, then Johnson and Allen right back, and six tied at six under par. That's coming up next with Jim Nansen crew out in California here on CBS with Clark Kellogg, Kevin Harlan. Halfway through this first half, great balance by Indiana early. What has Ohio State done to get back in this game? I think they've picked up the defense. They've made a couple of shots. 5-0 run you see there over the last couple of minutes for Ohio State. It's Butler guarded by Besson. Right inside of him there. You want to attack the seams of the zone. That's at the elbow, and the middle of the zone is typically vulnerable with good ball and player movement. And ultimately, if you get it in the middle, you can get it to the short corners, that area between the sideline and the basket along the baseline. Which means you got to read real well. Like here, they read an open. Stemmler on the wall. Oh, man, what a, a rebound. Fifth rebound. Pulled down by DJ Wright, and an offensive foul is called on Eric Gordon. This is why this guy is leading the Big Ten in rebounds. Look at this rebound by DJ White. Three white shirts around him, and nobody gets to the ball before he does. That's the first Indiana foul of the game. The Buckeyes on a 7-0 run right now. Deeper for three. Another rebound hauled down by DJ White. And here comes Ellis. The head of the defense initiating the defense is always Jamar Butler. Look at White here going in on to Williger. I talked about the middle area of the floor being mm -hmm. vulnerable against his own. Both of these teams play zone, so they should have a good handle on how to attack it effectively and a good job by Indiana that time. We talked about Jamar Butler at the head of the zone defensively for Ohio State. He's played every minute of every game the last three. It's a really demanding position because Thad Mata wants the guy on top to be active. And Jamar has to figure out where he's going to get his breaks within the game. And on occasion, 
he'll put it in park at the defensive end. <laughs> shot <laughs> necessity. There's five now on the shot clock. Deeper going inside. The freshman turns it over. Here comes Jordan Crawford, a freshman from Detroit. His brother is Joe Crawford, who plays at Kentucky. A three by four. My good. He's knocked down three triples in the first half already. But where was he, Kevin? He was almost next to us. <laughs> he is so far above that arc. 23, 24 feet away every time. Well, if you crowd him out there, he's going to go by you. Evan Turner. Ohio State has done well to get that ball moving from side to side as Turner tried to squeeze it in. That's another turnover. Stemler picks it up. That's a nice job of rotating by Indiana. When that ball gets to the middle, the guys on the wing have to really peel back and get into the basket area for that attempted pass, and Indiana did it perfectly there. And Jamarcus Ellis again right to the rack. Third time he's done that, finding two again. Well, he came off the bench today. He's been a starter most of the season. And sometimes watching your game to start the game can give you a little better, better handle on what you need to do once you get out there. Ellis has six, a seven nothing run by the Hoosiers right now. Seven and a half to play in the half. Deeper picked up by Gordon. Kufus out of the game, Kevin. The Buckeyes really don't have a guy who can catch it in the post and try to make a move. So they've got to do it with ball movement, penetration, and shot making from the corner. Turner's got to fire one on the shot clock with Gordon in his way. Every time it seems the Bucks are letting that shot clock riddle down to single digits. And I don't know if it's the defense or maybe just trying to get that offense. I think some of the credit has to go to the defense. The Hoosiers are doing a nice job with their activity in denying good looks at the basket. They've been looking for a defensive stopper. Ellis picks up his first foul. And the Hoosiers back on top by five. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summer with the statistics on both sides. You can see the turnovers even at four apiece, but this has been as you can see, plus eight, pretty big for Indiana right there in points off turnovers. But a game of runs, a 7 nothing run moments ago by Ohio State, now Indiana on a 7 nothing run. Well, both teams, I think, doing a reasonably good job defensively in their zone defenses. Indiana has knocked down one more three-point field goal attempt. And I also think they've done a better job of getting some action going to the basket. And as a result, they've got the five-point cushion. 7 5 to play here in the first half. With 19 and 3 Indiana against 16 and 7 Ohio State, with Wisconsin losing to Purdue and Madison last night, Indiana alone in second place in the Big Ten coming into today. Terrilla to got it. That's all he's always had these players right out of a break. It sure takes a lot of coaching to get that thing to work. Well, it takes a lot of breakdown, too, defensively to get one right at the rim like that. D.J. White had his back to the ball, and Terwilliger took full advantage. That stops a 7-0 run by Indiana. We got a three-point game, a look at that Mata and his Bucks down by three. NASN's coverage of the college basketball season continues this Saturday with a live ESPN triple header. Catch a live preview of all the day's games on ESPN's College Game Day. Then the triple bill tips off with Georgetown at Syracuse. Next, we head to the Big East as Louisville take on Providence. Finish off with more conference action from the Pac-10 with Stanford at Arizona. A live college basketball triple header this Saturday only on NASN. Take a look at why the Buckeyes got this basket. So Williger just going to go right there because D.J. White has his back to the ball. So he never sees a fake screen, and then he steps, and D.J. sees him much too late, and Terwilliger takes full advantage. Indiana out there with uh, D.J. White, Gordon, Crawford, Stemmer, and then uh, inbound with Jamarcus Ellis as Deba watches the other Young freshman Jordan Crawford get at the other end of the floor. DJ 
right into Tebow, who held his ground. Stenley had a hand on it. It is off of Ohio State. Indiana will inbound. Shot clock at nine. Hunter Deeber to Williger, Lighty, and Butler out there for Ohio State. Gordon. Crawford from way outside. Hunter with the rebound. Nice box out that time by Othello Hunter. That guy is content to just walk it up. Here's to Williger, who's played now in 105 games with the Buckeyes, but has never started. Lighty inside over DJ White. White collects his seventh rebound this afternoon. He got that one in part because Jamarcus Ellis did a nice job boxing out. Crawford gets it from Gordon. Rebound by Terwilliger. And here is Jamar Butler. He was an honorable mention all Big Ten player a season ago. After winning the Mr. Ohio Basketball Award, three-time first-team All-State player, people missing. He was covered on the play by Stemmer. And there's a shove and a foul, and it goes on Othello Hunter for the first time. Take CBS Sports with you wherever you go. Get live score stats, even manage your fantasy team. Text SCORE to 99888 or go to mobile.cbssports.com. Kevin okay, Indiana really doing a nice job in their zone in every way. Active on the ball, rotations are good, and their defensive rebounding extremely well also. Kufus has just come in for Hunter for the Buckeyes. That's it. And Crawford. Crawford, one of the top scoring freshmen in the Big Ten. A lot of people think he might be the best sixth man in the conference, along with Lucas up at Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Both having terrific freshman seasons. Ellis. His first miss. Whitey couldn't get it. White rips it away and puts it in. He is something else on the glass. One thing about this Indiana team is part of working team as you'll find in the conference. Yeah, they have done a nice job, and that's been a trademark of all the teams that Calvin Sampson has coached. This is where they're having their most success, I think. They've pounded the offensive glass, but defensively, they've done a nice job rotating. Whitey to Butler and Butler to Williger. Late with the closeout is Denver. It was tipped on the play by Ellis. Here comes Butler. Kufus for two. And picked up by Ellis. Lasers it down court. Two on one with Gasset, but he takes it himself with the great move. Oh, what a move by Jordan Crawford. My goodness. Biggest lead right now for the Hoosiers, 23-16. That's like being an agitator <laughs> in the washing machine. <laughs> Spin and rinsing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Great move. And it came off a turnover, too, to collect yeah. himself and to get that thing in. With Deaver now penetrating. And Whitey. Got to hit some of these perimeter shots. That's a good look for a good shooter. Oh, 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 couldn't get in his face. That ends an 11-2 run by Indiana. Well, it's funny, Kevin, despite that run, it's only a four-point game, you know, after Indiana had that nice little surge and the beautiful move by Crawford. A three-point field goal can get you right back into things. Here's White. Out of bounds. Now watch this Crawford move down low and it came off the turnover. Words don't do it justice. Size him up, spin him around, and that's as good as it gets right there. And how about DJ White? This is mine! Get away from it, young fellas. Six points and eight rebounds for White. Hoosiers by four. Look at their record in the Big East. Six and five, and they've beaten some good teams there. I'd throw Trent Johnson out there as well. Oh, that stands for yeah, yes, an outstanding job. Sean Miller at, at Xavier. I mean, there's so many guys. Mark Turgeon at Texas A&M. Anytime you take over a new team, that first year can be a bit bumpy, but he seems to have that team on, on 
good level ground now here recently. Three on the shot clock, White above everybody with the great entry pass put in there by Jamarcus Ellis. Well, you knew this was going to be a difficult matchup for Ohio State. They don't have a significant presence inside that can match up with D.J. White. His strength, his explosiveness off the ground, his tenacity, all of that on full display here as it's almost, and he almost got another rebound. Good job by Kufus to battle inside. And then here comes Whitey trying to go inside a congested lane. And a foul. By the way, Indiana plus eight points in the paint over Ohio State today. Coming up in the at and at the half, Chris Johnson, Seth Davis will get you caught up on all the action in college basketball. Plus, they'll have the latest at and t Smith watch. at and at the half is coming up next. Here is David Lighty at the free throw line. He plays a lot of minutes, ninth most in the Big Ten. First free throw of the game right here. Lighty from Cleveland, Ohio. Basketball, basketball player of the year in that city, one of the top 30 in the country. His defense, I guess, is really the, the thing you think about with Lighty, although his offensive game is, is a nice developing story. It is evolving and getting better as he misses two free throws there. He's a mid-50% free throw shooter. With that stroke, he's got to be a better converter than that. But he's a terrific kid. Went to the same high school I did up in Cleveland, St. Joe's. And Trying to be a leader on this squad, and really for the Buckeyes to prevail today, they've got to find a way to handle D.J. White inside, and they need those wing guys, Lighty, Diebler, Evan Turner. Two of those three have to get on a roll and knock down some perimeter shots against the zone defense. Gordon is our leading scorer. He's uh, the Indiana freshman. He's got nine. All of his points have come above the arc. All of his shots have come above the arc. And here they've got Deeper the other way. Now six points for Kufus and six points for Deeper. Those are the highest scores for the Buckeyes. Approaching two to play in this first half. Over Stemler, a three. Kufus inside, tuck it up and puts it in. Nice job by Costa Kufus. I think David Lighty may have kept that ball alive initially. Somebody for the Buckeyes did there. They get two points out of it. He's there to clean it up, but can't get it in from point blank range. Look at the move and a slam dunk inside by D.J. White. Up high and down hard. We talked about points in the paint, partner, and Indiana having the better of it in a big way here in this first half. Well, you picked out White in the open, and that guy has been the first with 10 points and 9 rebounds in this first half. He's an absolute beast. A nice little floater inside, but no offensive rebounds on most possessions for the Buckeyes. Game of runs. Indiana began it 8-0. Ohio State came back 5-zip. Indiana 4-0. Ohio State 7-zip. Indiana they went on 11-2 run. That's what our game has been like today in spurts. Mm -hmm. Not much stoppage in play either. Only the turnovers. No free throw attempts really. The Buckeyes have had a couple. Ellis over to Williger. Kufus with a good looking rebound inside. He has collected seven. Indiana has went by seven. The Buckeyes have went by as many as two. And he's there to vacuum it in again with the loose ball. Got to catch it cleanly. Evan Turner did not do that, and the Hoosiers get another turnover. And now they'll fold it for the final shot here, Kevin. 13th ranked Indiana against the unranked Buckeyes. Ohio State has lost five straight games to top 25 teams. We talked about it earlier. It's something they've got to hold over. That's exactly right. And you know what? If they can get a stop here, Kevin, to be down six, with the way Indiana has dominated inside, I think Thad Mata and his team would have to feel pretty good about it. White again with another put in. He's got 12. He has been dominant. He gets it before the buzzer. And Indiana takes their biggest lead of the game to halftime. Up by 8, 29 to 21. D.J. White. No pun intended, has been the center of their attack. Without question, and if you haven't seen much of the first half, this will be a capsule of it right here. D.J. White dominating the paint at both ends on the glass. Shot attempt, no box out. He's on a much smaller guy in David Lighty, and that's a mismatch of giant proportion. Indiana controlling the lane, outscoring Ohio State 16-6. Right now, let's take you to our CBS studios and get out the first half on a 17-7 run. D.J. White led the way. He was absolutely outstanding. A double-double, his 15th on the season. He had it halftime here, 12 points, 10 rebounds. But from the start, he was a man inside. That was his first field goal right over top of Othello Hunter. 
the block shot, muscling amongst three Buckeyes for that one. And then on the weak side again, and right before the half, we got another tip hoop. Let's take a look at our DiGiorno first half statistics. Well, you look at the numbers, and clearly um, the Buckeyes have to feel fortunate that they're only down eight, despite being dominated inside. Not much difference in the numbers from the standpoint of rebounding totals, but the offensive boards by Indiana, a huge part of their lead. So Jordan Crawford is out there with Eric Gordon. They've got White coming up the center screen. With the ball there, Jamarcus Ellis in step. That's the Hoosier five, and right inside once again. The biggest lead now captured by Indiana. And 14 points for D.J. White with another double-double today. His 15th in the last 19 games for Indiana. It would be nice to see if Othello Hunter can get going. He had 15 and 12 in the win against Michigan on Tuesday night here. That's his first bucket to go with two rebounds. So let's see how aggressive Ohio State can be. They wanted to get into this pressure, but you have to score in order to do that. And they've not shot the ball well. And they didn't shoot the ball well in that first half. Gordon's got nine. Indiana plus 10 points in the paint, plus 10 points in points off turnovers this afternoon. Butler is on Crawford. The shot clock down to six. He feeds inside to Ellis, rejected by Kukas. And here come the Buckeyes. And Kukas did a nice job in that first half. He had eight points and six boards. Well, he carried his weight pretty well there. He needs some help, particularly from Hunter, inside dealing with DJ White. Whitey Butler, Evan Turner, Hunter, and Kufus. That's the Buckeye five. And Kufus outside, hit with three Ellis. Was there for the closeout. He's a big guy that has three-point range. He's not made a lot of them this year, but he's a capable three-point shooter. Buckeyes have led by as many as two. That was earlier on. Here's a Gordon three. Rebound by Kufus, who was a freshman from Kenton, Ohio. Talked about him at the top of our telecast. He's doing a solid job. And the Buckeyes, just what they needed coming out of the locker room at halftime to get this crowd back into things. 7 nothing run by Ohio State. It's a three-point game. Basketball Saturday, Virginia Tech will take on the Tar Heels in an ACC game. Sunday, Ohio State will battle Michigan right here on the home of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, CBS Sports. Ohio State has come out hit their first three shots in their second half. Indiana has had three turnovers in their last four possessions. And Costa Kufis has been a catalyst. He had eight points and six rebounds in the first half, was overshadowed a bit by the dominating performance of D.J. White. But here to start this second half for Ohio State, Kufis has a three-point field goal, two rebounds, and a block shot. Neither team made a change out of that break. It's the number one offense in the Big Ten of Indiana against the number one defensive field goal team in the Big Ten, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Indiana has won two straight Ohio State has won four of their last five games. Crawford, Gordon, inside and looking for White. Kukas has two black shots. Othello Hunter. Offensive foul. Big time denial here by Costa Kufus. Good catch by White, but then Kufus right there to deny him. And I'm sure Thad Mata wants to see his team be more aggressive in that pain area defensively. Good cover. But we're not getting away. Over and back. Costa Kufus, K squared, doing a nice job trying to carry the Buckeyes, one of his two blocks here to start this second half. Then he knocks down the three. There aren't many big guys that can block shots and then step out and shoot threes as well. White and Kufus. Hunter with a big rebound. He thought he had to come up big in this second half. He's already hit one basket. And finding his way inside, and they keep it alive. Evan Turner to David Lighty. 
Johnny lost it, went right to Gordon, also reaching in was Ellis. And the foul goes on Gordon, who picks up his second personal foul. Gordon had all of his points in that first half, a little bit quiet here in the second. He's got the two fouls, as we said, he's got nine points. All of his points have come above the arc today. All three of his field goals from beyond the arc and very deep beyond the arc. Evan Turner out of Chicago, NCAA men's March Madness on demand is back. Watch live games from the NCAA championship online for free. VIP passes are available now. Sign up at NCAA.com. As Evan Turner went to St. Joe's High School in St. Louis, the same high school as Hoosier great Isaiah Thomas. Right. And starts as a freshman for the Buckeyes. What a nice start here for Ohio State. Getting themselves back into the game. A late also, nothing run. Yep, and also getting the fans back into it a bit. Great defense by the Buckeyes. Tabor is back in the game. Here's Bassett with the ball. And Tabor the walk on senior. Back to the inside. And a foul on Indiana. Goes on Bassett. Amon Bassett picks up his first. You can clearly see the team that is the aggressor is Ohio State, Indiana, on its heels a bit here in the first three and a half minutes. Crawford comes back in. There goes Ellis out for the Hoosiers. Tabor, White, Gordon, Bassett, and Crawford, the Indiana five. Indiana hasn't scored, by the way, in the last three and a half minutes of this game. Four minutes gone here in the second half. Lighty against Crawford. White is there to knock it away. Taylor tries to bring it in and saves the ball. And here comes Jordan Crawford. There's a foul in the backcourt. Above the arc, it's on uh, Turner. Picks up his first personal foul. It appeared as though Turner was going to emerge as the third leading scorer on this team in third effort, but he struggled. They need him in his offense. I agree. Timeout, two-point game, the Hoosiers. Carolina, Ty Lawson, and Tyler Hansborough. And Kansas, Darrell Arthur, and Brandon Rush, two beauties. Number one Memphis, paced by Chris Douglas Roberts and the spectacular freshman point guard, Derek Rose. At UCLA, bruising freshman big men, Kevin Love and Darren Collison lead fourth ranked UCLA. How about the tandem of Michael Beasley and Billy Walker? They have keyed K-State's resurgence in Manhattan. And then there are a few other tandems out there. Heron Goatee and McAlarney from Notre Dame. Bayless Buttinger from Arizona. And then you've got James and Augustine from Texas. And a couple today. Not bad at all on the season. And the Big Ten play 39 points a game between Gordon and White. They're a little more than halfway to those numbers today with the combined 23. But to start this second half, They've only managed one bucket, and D.J. White got it early. Ohio State's on 8 nothing run. One of four shooting in this half for Indiana. Three of five shooting for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Look at the defensive pressure, and Ted Hillary went down, as did Thad Mata. Both guys took a spill. Thad Mata still wearing a brace with the drop foot, the result of back surgeries this summer. Here's the collision. Effort by David Lighty. There goes Ted Hillary. David Lighty is able to maintain his footing. And Thad Mata, as I just indicated, had a couple of back surgeries over this past summer. And is uh, still struggling with what they call a drop foot. And both all seem to be up and okay. David Lighty just took a spear. He did not get up quickly. Oh, look at Gordon float down the lane for Indiana. He's got 11. And cradled that ball and uh, moved Beautiful. it around. That Beautiful. was great ease. Screen by Hunter. Butler is quickly doubled. Another screen by Hunter. A three by Butler. Rebound is off the rim and out of bounds. Watch this again. The great deceptive move by the freshman Eric Gordon. Well, here you see him coming right at you and then avoids Kufus. Puts the ball away and then makes it reappear right on time. What's your favorite part of Gordon's game? Well, I like his poise and I like his tenacity and his change of pace. And you can't help but like the deep range because that sets up an awful lot of what he can do off the dribble. And this guy 
Again, I said it at the top. I think he's by far the leading candidate for player of the year. A lot of basketball to be played. He's 16 points today. Double-digit rebounds on 8 of 12 shooting. But it's not just the numbers, Kevin. Mm -hmm. It's the way he's bringing it game in and game out. The force that he's playing with and the confidence. I mean, his body is in terrific shape, his strength, and he's got explosiveness off the, off the floor. He's, he's elevated his game to All-American status. Evan Turner with the miss, and most of his shots are contested, too. It's not like he's got open shots. He had the hunter in his face. Well, it's hard to uh -oh, deep. Three hard. deep, yep, too much. And there's White fighting for the loose ball. Hunter comes up with it to the bucket. Yeah, his ability to elevate and the way he extends on that shot, Kevin, makes it difficult for most defenders to get to it. Well, his elevation is caught my eye today, and here they got numbers three on two. Crawford, that's it, over Turner. That's a three. Yep. That's well done in transition. You run for layups, but on occasion, when you've got that ball in the middle of the floor and you've got guys that can shoot the three, you flare out to that three-point line and knock down that transition three. Indiana's on a 7 nothing run. Good stuff. Conference supremacy is on the line this February on NASN with live weekday college basketball doubleheaders as the NCAA's best fight it out for a place in the March Madness tournament bracket. This week on ESPN's Big Monday, Villanova, Georgetown, and Kansas, Texas. Then on ESPN's Wednesday Night Hoops, it's Maryland Duke and Kansas State, Texas Tech. Live weekday college basketball this Monday and Wednesday only on NASN. Certainly doing the job, points in the paint. They've got 22 of those. Transition defense, nothing for Ohio State in the fast break area. Indiana has not gotten to the free throw line. A good job by Ohio State not to foul. But then Indiana winning the three-point shooting contest, 4 of 13. Not a great percentage, but it's enough when you're doing work inside, as the Hoosiers have done, off the offensive glass. Once Indiana called that timeout, they've gone 3 of 4 from the field. Diebler has now come in for the Buckeyes. With Butler, Kufus in the middle, Hunter remains, as does David Lighty. Indiana stays intent, changes out of break. White is on Kufus and alters the shot. And here comes Jordan Crawford. They got Bassett on the wing, and Crawford takes it himself into the freshman Diebler, and the tap-in try is good by Tabor. The walk-on Tabor puts it in, the junior from Evansville. This is his second start in the last three Big Ten games, and again, I talked about it in the first half. Calvin Sampson trying to get some consistencies from that power forward spot. His numbers aren't large, but he does everything else that Sampson wants done at that position. Deagle from Butler for three. And a great rotation, and Tabor was right on the closeout for Indiana. That ends a 9 nothing run. And pass it from Gordon. Finish that thought about Tabor. He doesn't produce big points. Jordan Crawford, tough shot, oh, but he got the roll. Beautiful teardrop. He's got a lot in his book bag. He's got the crossover. He's got the floater off one foot. He's got the spin moves. He's a guy that just has a knack for scoring the ball. When he faced his brother's team, the University of Kentucky, he got a start because Gordon was not healthy and didn't play and ended up with 20 points in that game. And Gordon's people puts that in with a nice floater. He's got 11 following up his 14-point performance against Michigan earlier on. Finishing up on Crawford, he had... 18 points against Illinois. And the drive inside pass at the tap in put in by DJ White. He's got 18 points. He's collected 11 rebounds on the afternoon. And as we said, his 15th double double in the last 19 games. Yeah, he has been terrific. And again, now the Buckeyes scoring a little bit more consistently, getting into their pressure. But Indiana has been able to get to the rim the last couple of times against that pressure defense. Diebler taking it into three. Butler's on the wing. Shot clock is down to seven. Kufis with the late arriving. Gets it. Gets it for a big man that can hit that right wing shot. is so deadly. Yeah, it's very deadly because you typically don't want to put a big guy out there to defend him away from the goal. And the Buckeyes maintaining contact. 
Timely buckets by Diebler and Kufus. Look at Gordon. Kufus went inside with an offensive foul. Kufus has 14 points. He's knocked down a couple of threes. The Buckeyes coming back down by seven. Sports college basketball coverage is sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors. By Yellow Book. Wherever you look, Yellow Book. For more information, call 1-800-YB-YELLOW. And by Chevron, the power of human energy. Clark, you had a great college basketball experience this last Thursday in downtown Indianapolis. Oh, it was absolutely terrific. Fun, insightful, informative. These are things that the selection committee will not take into consideration as they try to whittle it down from 45 or so teams, maybe 50, down to the 34 at-large candidate style of play. The coach, whoever he is, geography, and also branding. In other words, not allowing a team's conference or past history or any of that stuff to impact how you analyze individual teams. And you know what? As we went through that process, myself and about 19 other members of the media, two of us represented one of the members of the selection committee and went through the full process of selecting and also um, seeding and bracketing the field. And you get lost in the process and you don't even look at conferences. You look at teams, which is what I thought was the case anyway. And um, it just confirmed a lot of that. It was really a, a long but fun and informative day. You and I producer Steve Shear were there representing CBS. And that was the tough part yeah. because he served in the role of chair. Yeah. And, and he it's knows. hard he enough knows. to deal with him <laughs> as an outstanding producer. But in the chair seat, he took it to a whole nother level. <laughs> which I don't even want to think about. Right, Evan, right, right. I know you do. Evan Turner missing at the other end. Easy points by Indiana. They're plus 16 in the paint. They're plus 14 points off turnovers. Their easy points have been a big difference in this game as Gordon tries to win his way down the baseline in a foul. Tomorrow, Dave unveils the new Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover. And Tuesday, catch an exclusive interview with the cover model. Also later this week, Charles Barkley of TNT. And that's only on CBS. White has been huge. Gordon has played well, but he is the leading scorer in the Big Ten. He has 11 points today for Indiana, a freshman from Indianapolis. What you also like about him, you asked me earlier, he rarely forces it. He tends to allow the game, and he's gotten better. You asked me how has he gotten better from sure. the beginning of the season to now. I think he's become a little better, as most freshmen become better at it as they play more, in understanding that they don't have to force the issue. D.J. White picks up his first personal foul. Halfway through the second half. Indiana alone in second place in the Big Ten. Wisconsin losing to Purdue last night opens up this opportunity. Here's Debo. Indiana has a crushing schedule awaiting them, including a game with Purdue down the road. Diebler loses the ball. He is a freshman for the Buckeyes. And he's one of the freshmen helping to keep Ohio State close here in the second half. Nice to see an outstanding shooter splash from jump shots. And Kufus has had an outstanding afternoon. But this Buckeye team not getting the production from Jamar Butler it normally gets, nor is it getting the kind of production it needs from Othello Hunter in a game against a team like Indiana. Terrilliger has checked in with Diebler and Kufus. Evan Turner's in there, and Jamar Butler continues to play a lot of minutes for the Buckeyes. Yeah, big time. He's played every minute of every game the last few. That's it. Shook Butler's defense on the foot. Is he getting tired? Of I play? think so. I really do. I know he won't admit it, but as you watch him, his game is such that he's not a guy who does a lot of things easily. Mm -hmm. So he has to expend an awful lot of energy. He has to labor to do what he does, which is very good. He's solid. He shoots the three. He's excellent in the pick and roll. But when you combine that with the heavy minute load, that he has to carry and has been carrying. When you get into February, emotionally, psychologically, physically, that begins to wear on you, Kevin, and I think you see some of that in that he's just not as fresh as I think he would like to be or needs to be for a team that doesn't have much of a margin of error. Interesting observation. He feeds Diva right there for three. By the way, Butler is the number one assist man in the Big Ten coming in. Butler feeds him, he's got five assists, and Diva has been terrific. He's hit four threes. He's got 14 points and 28 points in his last two games. I'll keep an eye on this, and I would like our viewers to as well. When Diebler, Turner, Lighty, if two of those three guys can get it going on the wing, especially the way Kukas has played, they've got a chance to perhaps get back in this and maybe win it. 
Terwilliger with a good closeout defensively for the Buckeyes in that long three by Bassett. Nice job here. Pseudo penetration by Diebler and then excellent penetration by Butler for the kick out. And John Diebler knocks down the three. Ohio State has hit four of seven threes in the second half, which gives us a six point game. Because Indiana's doing all their damage inside. Diebler moving along the baseline. Now, Evan Turner does a nice job of trying to penetrate the zone off the dribble or pass. Kufus and White. Treats spin move by Costa Kufus. Beautiful drop step. You know, he's thrown the jump hook to the middle, and then he went back. The counter move to that, he's got 16 points. And we hear the whiteout fans for only about the second or third time here today, Kevin. And they are loud. Gordon, Tabor, Ellis, Bassett, into deep and picks up the foul. Freshman picks up his first of the day. Buckeyes hanging in there with highly ranked Indiana, 7.35 in the half. Some nice teams in that Atlantic 10 Conference. Outstanding teams, and you take a look at these, all of these teams would be on the at-large board initially if the season ended today. Xavier is an outstanding club playing at a very high level, perhaps looking at somewhere along that top four seed line, I would think, as things currently stand. A lot of basketball to be played yet. The Rhode Island's a significant non-conference win. St. Joe's has won a number of games on the road, and Charlotte has some impressive wins as well. In the second half, Indiana shooting 50%, Ohio State shooting 57%. Indiana getting all their points inside, plus 14 points in the paint. But Ohio State has scored nine more above the three-point arc than Indiana. And that's how they're doing it. Teams doing it in different ways offensively. Here's a long three by Crawford, the rebound by Butler. Diebler, Bassett was right there. Butler can't hit the three. Saved by Stemmler. Nice job by Lance nice. Stemmler to keep that alive and get position, possession for his team. Screen by White. Sneaking inside is Gordon. Lucas got a hand on it. Typically, you talk to the coaches at Ohio State, and they mention that two of these three have to get it going. Turner hasn't produced in terms of big points, but he does have five boards, and his activity has been good defensively. Diebler, his second consecutive strong performance off the Buckeye bench. At 14 in the win against Michigan on Tuesday night. Whitey hasn't seen a lot of minutes here in the second half. You know half. what? I think he hurt himself. He took a fall. Midway through this half, Kevin, and he came up a little gimpy, and that may very well be why he's not back on the court. Stemmer's on Kufus, and over Gordon, it's Diebler. Kufus tried to save it, out of bounds it goes. The people of Jericho never gave up, and neither did their fans. Don't miss the return of television's most anticipated drama. A new season of Jericho begins Tuesday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. With Clark Kellogg, Kevin Harlan, our entire CBS crew here in Columbus, Ohio. Approaching six to play in regulation in a four-point game that has seen Indiana lead by as many as ten. The Buckeyes lead by as many as two. It's White, who's been terrific. Rebound by Terwilliger. White's got 18 points and 11 rebounds, and he leads Indiana. 16 for Kufus is the top man for the Buckeyes. He's got the ball right here, working on Gordon. Little shove by Eric Gordon, who picks up the foul, little hand check. And Gordon picks up his fourth personal foul. Could be large, because he's a guy you like to have on the floor because of his ability to manufacture shots, fighting the shot clock. And as this game winds down, I would expect both teams to be rather cautious with their possessions. Turner works right at Gordon, why not? Now he goes into White, that's a foul called on White. That's what you like about Evan Turner's game. The ability to create off the dribble. He's got good savvy, but he's got the ability. He's got good size, good ball skills, so he can attack in there and draw fouls or create shots for his teammates. Now, Turner's got four points today. The last three games, 80 minutes, nine total points. Yeah. Up until that time, he had been terrific. Yeah, he sure had been. Indiana 
And has not taken a free throw today. Ohio State has used the blog on Turner. Stat sheet stuffer. He's a guy who does a little bit of everything across the stat sheet column. Rapid improvement. You talked about his three-game slip here, but up until then have been playing. And he stirs things up. That's what you like about him because he can do a lot of different things to help you. Deflections, steals, can play multiple positions. Six-nothing run by the Buckeyes. Three-point game. Stemler is screen. Ellis to right inside and right over Kufus with the jam and a foul. What a play by D.J. White. Kufus picks up his third. White's got 20 for the Hoosiers. High-low action here. You get it to the middle of the zone. Kufus late rotating. And that's how you get posterized. You get late to the rim against a guy as strong and as, as athletic as D.J. White. Good effort by Kufus, but in that case, when you're going against a guy that big, you got to let him make that and not foul. Indiana's first free throw. This is the fourth consecutive, fourth week this season that White has been named a Big Ten Player of the Week. Four times. Incredible season he's had. Can you say Player of the Year? He's right there, isn't he? <laughs> he's right there. Who are some other names that catch oh, in the Big Ten? I, oh, I wouldn't even be able to go anywhere else other than him. He's eclipsing everybody else. Goofus with the miss. Good defense by Stemler, who had the close out. Here comes Indiana. Every time that Ohio State has gotten close, Indiana has always answered. Good point, Kevin. They have. And they're doing it by getting the ball inside. Points off turnovers, as you've indicated. And we've talked about a huge number in this low-scoring game. Indiana 44% from the field. And Ohio State is only averaging 37% shooting against them all season long. Number five in college basketball. So Indiana is having a great game against this very good defensive-minded Buckeye team. Stemmer the miss, Kufus with the rebound. He's now corralled nine. Yeah, doing a nice job, strong effort by Costa Kufus today. Turner drives, and that is a Indiana foul. It's called on Bassett. And Bassett picks up the foul, and that is number two on him. And Survivor is back. And it's never been this exciting, this intense, and this entertaining this early on. Don't miss an all-new Survivor, fans versus favorites. That's Thursday at 8, 7 Central. On CBS, here is Evan Turner, freshman from Chicago. Indiana over the limit now, Kevin. The Buckeyes have only committed. I'm trying to find it. It was it three team fouls for them? Four. Four. Four team fouls for Ohio State. So Ohio State, not a great free throw shooting team on the year in conference play at 69%. But they've got an advantage here. They can continue to be aggressive, have two fouls to give. And if they can attack the rim, they might be able to continue to chip away by getting to the foul line and converting. Ohio State in the Big Ten this season at home, 5-0. Overall, 12-1. 16-7 is their overall record. Indiana, 19-3. 8-1 in the Big Ten, second place right now. Kufus and White, what a great matchup it's been today with the two big men. Bassett shot clock at three over Turner. Tapped in, but was he in the rim? They don't say. Still, they got a hand on it. They're going to count it for two. Well, that was really close. It was It close. seemed like it was going to hang in there and go in on its own. 51-45, the Hoosiers. Diebler over Bassett for three. Oh, and a great rebound is snared inside by White. He's collected 12 today. Yeah, he has, and he's gobbled them up. Three and a half to play in regulation. White is not just a, a neighborhood rebound, but he's a zip code rebound. He goes outside of his area <laughs> to grab boards. There's Jamarcus Ellis. Works on Kufus. One of the things that Indiana has done is they've made Kufus work on the defensive end. I wonder how much he's got left in his tank. I think he's got plenty, Kevin. I really do. I mean, he's a guy that averages about 27 minutes a game. He's had a productive game today. I think they've got to make sure he finds, get, get him touches. And Evan Turner unable to convert there. That's a, and wide open, too. Yeah, yeah, that's a big miss. Good look. But you know what I mean? You always want to make your best player work on the defensive end. Oh, right? no, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And yeah. they've been going at that kid a lot today. They have. He's they just have a been, freshman. And he's held up. Mm -hmm. He's held up extremely well. He did a nice job on the blast. Defensively, he's been in pretty good position most of the day. And offensively, he's cast in on his opportunities. Crawford over Hunter. This kid has been impressive, hasn't he, Kevin? Jordan Crawford. He's got six points. 
And four of those have come here in the second half. Yeah, and that's a big one there as the lead now is pushed to eight. They go inside Hunter. Oh, he got great position. Man shoved, but no call, and he gets the two. And a beautiful pass by Evan Turner. Great pass. A tough angle, but he put it right where he had to, away from the defense and down low. And this is one we thought might have been a goal 10. Oh, it looked like it was. So that did ball. Van Mata. That ball was on the rim. 53 47 aboard for Singh and Hart after three rounds on top. Justin Johnson and Michael Allen right back. Two strokes off the pace and six tied after that. Coming up next on CBS. 2.19 to play here. Indian on top, 53-47. They're the 13th ranked team in college basketball. As Clark mentioned, Ohio State hasn't beaten the top 25 teams since they took on then number 21 Syracuse and beat them November 21st. Five straight losses. We got a team ranked at home like to be able to put this one on the positive side of the win loss legend. Mighty returns for sitting for a few minutes. Big Ten's leading the score with the freshman Eric Gordon running through the lane right now he has 11 points. He's averaging over 21 a game. And the second leading scorer in the conference is DJ White. He is living up to his billing and this on the fly by Cuffin. Those guys need to get a good Reasonably quick, high-quality shot. Can't use an awful lot of time. Whitey is back in. Diebler inside the Kufus. Works on DJ White. Hunter with a big time offensive rebound for the Buckeyes. That was large, and he shoved to get it, but a little bit of hand play is allowed in the paint. Four-point game. You want to again defend without fouling here if you're Ohio State. Although you have a foul to give, you don't want to reset that shot clock by foul. And then you've got to chase down the missed shot if Indiana is able to get up a shot. If you're Indiana, I think you go to board in the game. White is screened, that's it a three. Rebound by Debra. Huge possession for the Buckeyes right now. Butler drives in on Ellis. Kufus. Diebler took too many steps. A crucial turnover for Ohio State. Timeout taken. Indiana will have it when we come back, holding on to a four-point lead on CBS. Back here in Columbus with just under 44 seconds to play in regulation. There's our game reset with a couple timeouts remaining for both the Hoosiers of Indiana and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. 53-49. Indiana. And by half, here are the numbers. Well, nothing really jumps out at you. Ohio State, as you and I were talking during the break, did get going a little bit better from the three-point line to maintain contact. Rebounding about even there. Points off turnovers, a huge number for Indiana all game long. 19 total points off turnovers. And in a low possession, low scoring game like this, Kevin, that's a large number. I mean, that's 30% that's of their points. Gigantic plus 14 points in the paint for Indiana. Yeah. Ohio State got back in by hitting a bunch of threes. They're plus nine points in that category, but they have missed their last five yeah. three-point shots. they just had a turnover yep. before this timeout. And now Indiana, Ohio State, will be forced to foul here if they don't get an immediate steal or turnover. Ellis gets it into Bassett. Covered by Lighty, who reaches and plunges and grabs him and draws the personal foul for Ohio State in 41.2 to play. His second team's fifth. It's a second on Lighty, 15 foul called on Ohio State. Well, the Buckeyes are going to have to continue to foul until Indiana is in the penalty. Indiana's taken one free throw shot today. One. Boy, man, Indiana doing a nice job of hot potato in this ball around. Good passing indeed. Gordon to Bassett, and wow. then Bassett was held by That's Evan about Turner. About 10 seconds there, Kevin. Terrific. They were yep, able to exactly eat up. 10. You're right. A little over 10 seconds. That's kind of where the where not being in the bonus works against you when you're on the bottom side of the scoreboard and you're trying to stop the clock and have a team shoot free throws so you can regain possession. There, there was a foul a before, there. yeah. There's dead ball foul here. So that's the limit. Bonus now for Indiana. Calvin Sampson has done a great job with this team. We told you before he's in his second season, the two-time national coach of the year. 
He was 12 years at Oklahoma, nine consecutive 20 win seasons. The 02 Final Four is where he took his Sooners. He was the Big Eight Coach of the Year. Last season they were 21 and 11. It is always difficult, I think, Clark, to see any coach step into the shadow of a guy like Bob Knight or Dean Smith or whoever it might be, Roy Williams of Kansas. It's always a difficult thing for that coach coming in to fill that vacuum. Well, it helps when you're one removed. Sure. And that certainly is the case with Calvin. That but still, that is a long shadow. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. That no, is a no, long shadow. It is. Very long shadow. Especially on a week like this where the name Bob Knight has come up yeah. a lot in Bloomington, Indiana. So the Hoosiers on top, 55-49. Alita, six and a half minutes of play in regulation. Game reset, you see 21 points and 12 rebounds by D.J. White. He's probably the player of the game stepping back. What, what do you think of this one? Every time Ohio State tried to make a run, Indiana responded, as you have to when you're on the road. A quick bucket there by Kufus, who's had an outstanding day for the Buckeyes, but it might be too little, too late for Ohio State. Kufus has 80s in a tape, big brother like never before, when each house guest is matched up with their own soulmate. It's a whole new game when Big Brother premieres Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. So Indiana will have the ball. Ohio State just scored. Listen to the schedule coming up now for the Hoosiers. Wednesday, Wisconsin. Next Saturday, Michigan State. And then the showdown with Purdue is looming February 19th. I think all of those are in Bloomington, though. Is that correct? Yes. So that certainly bodes well. You like, you're going to have to play well to beat those teams, all high-quality teams in the conference. And there you take a look at the Hoosier schedule the rest of the way. This is a huge win. Anytime you can get them on the road, it's not over yet, obviously, but if Indiana is able to hold on, it'll be a large, large win going into a nice home stretch against the top teams in the league. P.J. Hill is coming for Ohio State. Here is Gordon. Quick foul called on Jamar Butler. So Butler picks up the foul. 19.5 and a second off the clock. So Deebler and Kufus will check back in. Whitey will check out. And P.J. Hill will check out for the Buckeyes. Gordon, excellent free throw shooter on the year. 85% overall, 83% in league games. Number three in the conference. And number one in attempts, too. He gets yeah. to the line more than any other Big Ten player. Yeah, he has all year long, although he didn't really drive it much today. He and did. I think part of that is due to that wrist. He's able to play, but I think that's taken away a little bit of his aggressiveness in going to the rim. Especially going to the left, too. Yeah, correct, right, correct. Right. He's comfortable going both ways. Here is Evan Turner sliding down that baseline. They let him go in with just under 12 seconds to play in regulation. Boy, a little too easy, I think, there if you're in the Maybe. You want to make Ohio State take a little more time than that, but as long as you make free throws, it will be tough for Ohio State to make up the ground they need to in the time that's left. Bad model always, as most coaches do, coaching until the final whistle. I'll tell you what, this guy Jordan Crawford got the start today in place of Armin Bassett, who's been battling a little bit of an ankle injury. Six points, six rebounds, seven assists for Crawford. He's been terrific. Stat sheet stuff yes. at its finest on the road. Quality performance. Butler the miss. Crawford got a hand on it. It's off Indiana and 3.6 to play. Indiana with the win will go to 20 and 3. On the road, 6 and 1. In the Big Ten, 9 and 1. And alone in second place. Very impressive from start to finish by the Indiana Hoosiers here. On the Big Ten road, Indiana 5 and 1 with this win. As Diebler will be free to fire. And that's it. Ohio State goes down to 16 and 8 and loses today to Indiana 59 to 53. Today's Chevy players of the game, DJ White from Indiana and Kufus from Ohio State. Lucky Nation of their uh, determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution. For Clark Kellogg, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Columbus, Ohio. 59-53, Indiana. Coming up next, it's live final round coverage of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Big day for DJ White, 21 points and 13 rebounds. 15 for Gordon, second place Indiana with the win on the road.
This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.